Look at this ugly windless capstan. Not for long. On this episode of Trying Not to Sink, we are going to re-chrome this capstan. I'm making chrome. Not in my kitchen, you're not. Now, if you're a fan of our channel, you probably saw previous episodes where we did a major repair on our windlass, where we replaced the motor and the gearbox and the shaft and the control panel. Earlier this year, we decided to replace all of our ground tackle. We've got new chain, we've got a new Wildcat, we have new shackles, and the only thing we didn't replace is this ugly capstan. <laughs> And it doesn't need to be replaced because nothing's different. We upgraded our chain to a bigger size, but this was actually just used for the, the road. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why it's so worn out. As you can see, most of the chrome, or at least half the chrome is gone, and we never use it. I don't think I've ever, ever used this because we always use chain. However, it sits right there at the top of our boat and it's just an eyesore and I wanna try to make this thing look pretty again. Now, when it comes to refinishing this, there's a couple of things we could do. Uh, I could take it to a chrome shop and have them strip it and re-chrome it. And maybe that's probably the, the best thing I should be doing, but that's no fun. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this and then I am going to nickel plate it myself because it looks like a fun project. And well, I'm back here in Pennsylvania and I miss my boat. So this is going to make me miss it less by doing a boat project here in PA. First thing I need to do is get all the remaining old chrome off. And I did try sanding it, and well, of course, that wasn't gonna work. I wasn't hopeful. And now, um, I could take a grinder and kind of grind off all the chrome, and that would work, but it might damage the metal underneath the chrome. These things are made out of bronze, by the way, which is a mixture of copper and I believe tin, which I think makes it harder. So uh, if I strip all this down, it should come back to bronze, which would be uh, perfect for me to nickel plate it. By the way, I could use a sandblaster, but I don't own one. Uh, I'm gonna try and strip it chemically. I heard muriatic acid is the best way to do that. So I picked up some muriatic acid. Now, um, you can pick this up at hardware stores, Lowe's and Home Depot and all that, but don't get it from Lowe's and Home Depot. And the reason for that is they only sell one brand. I forget the name of the brand, but it's only a 10% solution. Whereas this here is about a 31% solution, it's three times stronger. And I get this at Ace Hardware. Uh, the 10% is perfectly fine when you're using it for things like um, cleaning your, your air conditioning lines on the boat, or if you're, you know, you're cleaning out a, um, a heat exchanger, say. But for stripping chrome, I think uh, what I've read, and I've never done this before, but what I've read is you want the stronger concentrate. So get this at Ace Hardware, it's three times stronger, and if you ever need to dilute it to 10%, so what, you add, uh, you know, add two parts water, one part this, easy. Now this is nasty stuff, so you wanna be real careful with this. Uh, one drop of this in your eye can blind you. So, uh, you know, you're gonna wanna use gloves, junky clothes, uh, eye protection, even a respirator if you have. So, well, let's give this a shot. Okay, well, while that is simmering, <laughs> We're gonna make a nickel plating solution. Now you can buy uh, nickel crystals and make this with some boiling water and all that. However, there's a way I can make it by actually just using nickel. Let me show you some of the supplies you're gonna need. Uh, first, we're gonna need another container. This is gonna need to be suitable for whatever it is we're going to be nickel plating, which is the cap stand, and this should be about the right size. We're gonna need nickel anodes. Basically, I got a, a bunch of these little plates and I got a rod. You just pick these up on Amazon. I think this total cost here for these things was about $25. We need some uh, jumper cables, alligator clip jumper cables, uh, a aerator. Uh, this is just to kind of keep the fluid moving so it kind of coats evenly. And, and we're gonna need vinegar. So I think I'm gonna need two or three gallons of vinegar because that's how much solution I'm gonna need in order to submerse the, uh, the capstan. 
Okay, well, let's get building this because it's actually gonna take several hours at least to make the solution. And uh, that can be going on while we are uh, cleaning the chrome off the cap stand. So making the solution because it's cheaper or for the love of science? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, for the love of science, I'm not cheap. <laughs> now actually, um, it, it seems like they both work just equally as well. And using the crystals was a little bit of a pain because you gotta take the crystals, you gotta heat up water to 180 degrees. You gotta pour that in and stir it. I figured, you know, it'd be just as hard to do this or just as easy to do this. And this will be more fun. So let me get building. So what we're starting with here is just regular household vinegar. And I'm gonna pour maybe about three gallons in here. Or at least till I think it's up about, my windlass is about five and a half inches tall. So as soon as this gets to be about six, seven inches tall, I'll stop putting vinegar in. Let me show you what I did here. I took these nickel anodes, really just nickel plates, and I connected the alligator clip to it, and I'm hanging it over the side into the vinegar. And I taped it to the sides with just some regular duct tape. I did uh, both sides. I have four of them in, just trying to get more action than if I only had two. And now what I need to do, uh, a couple of things. First, I need to add salt to this. And then I also need to hook it up to electricity. Now for electricity, you don't need a whole lot. In fact, what you can use is, well, what I'm gonna use anyway, it's just an old phone charger. It's uh, about three to five volts, and I think it's one amp. And that should be enough to do this. We'll see. Not really sure how much salt to add. One hundred percent natural sea salt. Scraped it off the boat. Wink, wink. <laughs> You know, at this point, I'm hooking it up to this charger, and the the polarity does not matter at this point because uh, we're just sending the I don't know electrodes. I don't know <laughs> things back and forth. The little guys are dancing back and forth. <laughs> Science, right? And uh, it doesn't matter when it comes time for us to do the nickel plating. The the polarity will matter a lot. We'll see what happens. What does polarity mean? Negative or positive, which way, which one's negative, which one's positive, doesn't matter at this point, but it will matter in the future. Okay, well, let's see if anything's happening here. <laughs> okay, well, I can see it's working, and the way you know it's working is you'll see little bubbles on the uh, on the anodes um, on uh, I guess it's the negative side because what happens what should happen is the um, the nickel leaves the anodes on the positive side and gets attracted to the ones on the negative side so there should be kind of a buildup there but in the process it has to go across the vinegar solution and the vinegar solution should turn like a, a bluish light bluish color if it's working. And that's going to take some time. I'm, I'm imagining it's going to take a couple hours. But uh, you, you should see this, uh, this solution turn blue. Let's go check and see how the windlass is looking. We'll take a peek. I'm holding on. It's okay. It's doing good. Looks like, I don't know. Looks no, looks like it's getting clean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What's it supposed to be doing? I don't know. It's supposedly the chrome is going to get fall off or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Oh. Um, I haven't seen it in video. I just heard this works. So it's, we'll see what happens. It's uh, not falling off. Uh, it's only been about 20 minutes, and I think it's going to take a couple hours. And oh. after a couple hours, I'll go out there and like see if I can push some of the chrome off. Okay. 
We'll see. Well, it has been 16 hours since we put the capstan into the muriatic acid. So we're gonna go take a look and see how it's doing. How's it look? <laughs> okay, well, um, it's working. It's not all the way there yet, but my hands are smoking. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it's, it is working. Um, I'm going to give it a few more hours, and then I might try and use my pressure washer to see if I can get it off. But it is starting to flake off, just not everywhere. So we'll see. But I didn't see any damage at all to the actual bronze of the cap stand. That's what I was concerned about leaving it in longer. So I think I'm going to leave it in in a few more hours and see what happens when I power wash it. We'll see. It has been about 18 hours since we started making our solution. And as you can see, it is a nice color now. I think I actually said it was supposed to be blue. It's more of like a blue-green, almost a mint color. But this is basically what it should look like. Now let me show you what the anodes look like. This used to be a rectangle. And uh, you can see that uh, the half of it is left and gone to, I guess this would be the, the cathode, if I'm remembering my high school science. Um, and a lot of the, uh, the nickel from this side has been deposited over here onto this. Let me see if it's hot. It's warm, it's not hot. Uh, and then much of it also is existing in the solution. And this is about ready to go, I think. Now, I did make a couple of changes uh, from when I originally started filming. It was taking, uh, uh, it was a very slow process. So I got another uh, power supply. This time I'm using an old laptop power supply, which is 20 volts and I think it's uh, five amps. So it's much more powerful than the phone charger that I was using. And I think the reason I needed to do this is because I have so much volume here. This is three gallons. And uh, most of the examples I've seen in other YouTube channels I've watched, they were only using little quart jars. So I think I just needed a little bit more power. Now I'm going to switch back to the lesser charge when I actually go to do the plating because I hear that you shouldn't use too much voltage or too much amperage when you do that. But this is about ready to go. I think I'm gonna run a little experiment and just take something random and put it in there and see how well it plates. And uh, while we're waiting, because we still have a few hours at least, I think, on the uh, capstan in the acid. Okay, so I'm going to take a penny and I am going to uh, drop it in there. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna disconnect the negative charge from the cathode here and I'm gonna attach a penny to it. And put that into the fluid. Okay, then I'll give that, I don't know, five minutes, see what happens. Okay, well, it's been 16 hours, and let's see how that uh, capstan's doing. Okay, four days later, four days in a muriatic acid bath, and I've succeeded in removing about 10% more chrome, which is not gonna help me at all. And the rest of the chrome that remained, it turned a brownish color, so now this thing looks really ugly. Um, well, it's obviously that the muriatic acid bath is not gonna work, even though after I pulled it out, I hit it with the power washer as well, and that's not helping. So the next step is I have one of these portable sandblasters. Uh, they're not good for big projects. For little projects they are because they only have a little hopper here and um, it's not gonna last very long, but this is a small item. I'm not like doing a car or a bumper or anything. So I'm going to try, I'm not gonna use sand. I'm gonna blast it with this aluminum oxide uh, 80 grit, I believe it is. I don't know, I know very little about this. I've never sandblasted anything before, so this is the first time for me, and we'll see how this comes out. Now what I've done is I've put the 
capstan inside the end of a contractor bag, one of these three mil trash bags, uh, in hopes that if for some reason I run out of the, the aggregate, whatever I'm using here, this uh, aluminum oxide, that I can maybe reclaim some of it and use it again if I run low. So that's the plan, we'll see if it works. Well, that was a fail. Uh, the sandblaster cleaned it up real nice, but it has failed to remove any more of the chrome that won't come off. Now, my air compressor is a little bit inadequate. It's only a two, two and a half horsepower air compressor, but I'm still doing this at 120 PSI, and the max for the gun is 150, and I doubt if I turned it up to 150, somehow it's gonna make any significant difference. So, I am at my last resort. 60 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander, and I'm running out of ideas. Sanding with the, was it 40 grit, was a fail. It took a little bit off, but it was taking forever, and it's just not gonna work out, at least not for the big pieces of chrome. So it's time to bring out the big gun. Finally, I have all of the chrome off of the capstan and I'm ready to nickel plate it. But before I do that, I've been running a test on this copper pipe that I put into the solution a couple of hours ago. And let me pull it out and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Well, it definitely coated. <laughs> wow. It's got a really nice sheen to it. It's, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick this up on the camera, but it looks really nice. It's darker than I thought it would be. It's kind of like a dark silver. It could also be dark because of the pipe that I'm using. I just chucked any old pipe in there. Anyway, I think it looks really nice. And let's go ahead and uh, let's do this capstan. Ooh, that's so pretty. Yeah, it looks, looks nice, huh? Oh my gosh, what kind of metal is this? It is bronze. That was under the chrome? This was under the chrome. You should leave it, dude. Really? Yeah, it's really pretty. <laughs> You know, I, I think she's, she's right. This thing actually looks really nice. I'm amazed, too, because I took a grinder to it. I used one of these, um, well, it's kind of a multi-grinder blade. I don't know. It says it's for cutting and polishing, which seems kind of impossible, but it came out really nice. In fact, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna do what Lynn said. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. You know, I think what I'll do is I will get one of the, that clear coat that they use for copper outdoors, you know, for copper wind vanes and things like that. They spray it on to clear coat it so it doesn't oxidize. I think I'm gonna try that. I think it's gonna look great. It's gonna be like chrome on the bottom and this shiny copper color on top. And well, look for it in a future video.